We continue now at the top of Daf and Dalit and Beis Masech Sukkah. This is Sukkah Daf 54b. On the previous summer, the Gemara had suggested that on Erev Pesach they would actually blow the trumpets 48 times. Rashi over here explains Erev HaPesach Sheyesh B'Shchitas Pesach because when they would shech the carbon Pesach, there would be Chav Zayin Tekiyos. There would be 27 Tekiyos. Shah Pesach Nishchat Begimul Kitos because the carbon Pesach would be shechted in three groups. Kasach Hakas, one group would go right after the other. Kedemar B'Tam Nishchat, like it says in Tam Nishchat. V'chol Kas Kores Halal Gimul Pamim. Now every single group would read Halal three times. Shayu Peschei and Merubim because there would be many carbon Pesach that would be brought. Vayu Tuun and Halal B'Shchit Tosim and they would need to say Halal when they actually shechted the carbon Pesach. Each group wouldn't finish bringing all their carbonos until they finished reciting the halal three times. Now, even though we said over there in the Mishnah, that they never actually went through it three times fully, that means they didn't finish the entire third one. But there was at least, every group went through it at least two times. They would begin the third recitation of the halo, so you wouldn't be missing any of the blowing of the shofaros, because they would actually blow the shofar at the beginning of the recitation of the halo. And every reading would get three tekios. So that's why, again, you would have these 27 tekios on Erev Pesach. You'd have a total of 48 tekios. And again, if you add these 27 tekios to the 21 tekios that were, to the 21 uh, trumpet blasts that were every single day, so again, you have 27 plus 21, it's going to be a total of 48. So that's another situation where there are 48 blowing of the trumpets. So the Gemara says, Imishom Erev HaPesach, no, if you're talking about Erev HaPesach, Lav Shiuruhu, that's not actually, uh, it, we, we, it's not actually something that's left out. It actually wouldn't reach 48. To Hamani Rebbe Yehuda, because it could be the author of our Mishnah is Rebbe Yehuda. And what does Rebbe Yehuda say? The Amr Rebbe Yehuda says, Mi Yemeyem Shal Kashlishis, Lo Higia Lo Marahavti Ki Yishma Hashem. They didn't even reach the paragraph of a hafti by the third group. Rashi over here says, Lo higia la hafti shall kriya rishona, meaning of even the first reading. Vien bo ela gimel tekiyos, you only had three tekiyos that time. Then they sha'ama muatin, because there was very few people left at the third group. Shevishtei kitos rishonas nismalo azor l'chol kas, because by the first two groups already was full, it was full the azora. Minisha kashlishis b'ma'ad, there were very few people left in the third group. Velo haya shchitas b'schei and ma'areches b'chdei kriya shalosh halolos. They didn't read through the halol nearly three times by the third group, and that's why it would not come out to 27, and therefore it would not come out to a total of, of, uh, of 48. Again, Lomar Hafti Kiyosh Ma'ashem Nei Shahayu Amam Watin, there were very few people left that had to bring Karm Pesach at that time. But the Gemara says, one second, V'ha Amrit will take the Mesor Sashas, V'ha Amrit Reisha Deloka Rebbe Yehuda. Didn't you already say the Reisha was not like Rebbe Yehuda? How are you saying now the Mishnah follows Rebbe Yehuda? We already said before that we're not following Rebbe Yehuda. Rashi over here says, the Reb Yehuda, Tzkiyo, 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 Bechad, the money. Reb Yehuda is the one that says that Tzkiyo, Tzkiyo, Tzkiyo is all counted as one. The whole point of these calculations is that Tzkiyo, Tzkiyo, Tzkiyo is counted as three separate mitzvos. But if you're counting them like one mitzvah, you don't have nearly the 48. So the Mishnah doesn't follow Reb Yehuda. So the Gemara says, not necessarily. Maybe the Tan of our Mishnah holds like Reb Yehuda in one regard and doesn't hold like Reb Yehuda in another regard. In other words, the Tan of our Mishnah counts Tzkiyo, Tzkiyo, Tzkiyo as three separate mitzvos. But the time of our Mishnah does agree with Rabbi Yehuda that in Erev Pesach, the third group would barely reach even a half to Kiyishma in the uh, in the recitation of the Halal. But the Gemara continues, Elamai Shire, the High Shire. But if that's the case, what else is left off? We're already leaving off Rosh Hashanah that falls out on Shabbos. Again, there has to be something else that's left off. And you just said that Erev Pesach, we're not leaving off because in Erev Pesach, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you don't reach forty-eight. As Rashi over here says, If you could say that our mission is like Rabbi Yehuda, and therefore they didn't have 48 blasts when it came to Erev Pesach, so my Shire the High Shire, what else is being left off? Why are we only leaving off Rosh Hashanah that falls out on Shabbos? So the Gemara says, no, there are other cases being left out of the Mishnah. Shire Erev HaPesach Shecholios Be'erev Shabbos. You have a case of, let's say, Erev Pesach falls out on Erev Shabbos. Apik Shis Va'ayel Shis. You take out six blasts, but you can replace them with six blasts. Rashi over here says, Erev HaPesach Shecholios Be'erev Shabbos. The apik shis mitkios kashlishis kreb Yehuda. It's erev Pesach, so we're leaving off the tikios, six of the tikios of the third group. We're going to follow Reb Yehuda. However, vayal shis, you can replace those with another six. The chol erev Shabbos, because er, any erev Shabbos, you have an additional six blasts to have tola v'avdola, because you're telling the people to stop doing work, and then you're telling people that Shabbos has come. So an erev Pesach that falls out 
on Erev Shabbos, you're going to have a total of 48, but that was left out of the Mishnah, just like other things were left out of the Mishnah, like Rosh Hashanah that falls out on Shabbos. And the Gemara continues that the two dots, quoting the Mishnah, Vein Mosif and Al Memches, you're never going to have more than 48 trumpet blasts. Gemara says, below, is that really true? Is there never more than 48? We can come up with the following case. Let's say Erev Pesach falls out on Shabbos. The Yilu Rabbi Yehuda Chamshin V'chad, if you're going to go according to Rabbi Yehuda, you'll, you'll actually get 51. And Yilu Rabbonim Chamshin V'sheva, if you follow the Rabbonim, you're going to get 57. Rashi over here says, V'lo Mosif and Alman Ches, V'lo Bitzmiya Gar Simula, this is a Tzmiya. Is there no more than 48? The Yilu Rabbi Yehuda Chamshin V'chad, you can have 51 if Erev Pesach falls out on Shabbos. Why? Chaf Aleph Shevachol Yom, you have 21 like we said every single day. V'tisha de Musaf, and now you also have Musaf over here, because it's Shabbos, so that's going to be an additional nine. Hare Shloshim Ushmona, that's going to come out to 38. Asara de Shtekitos, now you have another 10 for the two groups. They fully bring their carbon Pesachs. They recite Halo three times. Ushloshim de Kashlishis, and the third group, according to Rabbi Yud, only recites three, only blows three trumpet blasts. Hare Chavshin Vechada, that comes out to 51. And like we said, according to the Rabbanan, you're actually going to have 57 because you're not going to have three trumpet blasts in the third group. You're actually going to have a total of nine. That's an additional six. It's not going to be 51 total. It's going to be 57 total. And so the Gemara answers, We're only listing in our Mishnah things that happen every single year. But Erev HaPesach, Shecholios B'Shabbos, but Erev Pesach, falling out on Shabbos, Delesei B'Chol Shana Mishana, which doesn't occur every single year, Lo Katani, that we're not going to have in our Mishnah. So the Gemara says, one second, Atu Erev Shabbos, Shebeso Chachag, Mi'isei B'Chol Shana. Is it true that Erev Shabbos always falls out in the middle of Sukkot? That's not true. There could be situations where you don't have an Erev Shabbos in the middle of Sukkot. What would be that situation? Let's say you have a situation where the first day of Yontiv falls out on Erev Shabbos. So in that situation, you're not going to have an Erev Shabbos in the middle of, in the middle of Sukkot. As Rashi over here says, If Yomtiv, the first day of Yontiv falls out on Erev Shabbos, the Simchas Beis Hashweiv lo Dachi Yontiv. We already said that the Simchas Beis Hashweiv is not Dachi Yontiv. Get it? Not Matzah Yontiv v'Chulu. V'Chimati Su Erev Shabbos. And when the next Erev Shabbos comes, have a Le Shmini Atzeres. By then, it's already Shmini Atzeres. So you have a situation where Erev Shabbos is not going to fall out in the middle of Sukkot. So the Gemara answers, No. Kim Meklin on Yomtiv Rishon Be'Erev Shabbos. It's not true because if Yomtiv Rishon, if the first day of Sukkot would fall out in Erev Shabbos, Midcha Dachin Ale, we would actually add a day to El. We'd push everything off in order to make sure that that does not occur. My time and what's the reason? Because if the first day of Yontav of Sukkot falls out on Erev Shabbos, Yom HaKippurim Eimas Havim, when's Yom HaKippurim going to fall out in such a year? Bechad B'Shabbos. Yom, Yom Kippur is actually going to fall out on Sunday. We actually don't want Yom Kippur to fall out on Sunday because then you're going to have consecutive days, Shabbos followed right by Yom Kippur. Therefore, we actually end up pushing everything off by a day and you're not going to have a situation where Yontav Rishon of Sukkot is going to fall out on Erev Shabbos. But the Gemara continues, Omid is that really true? Do we really push things off so that Yom Kippur does not fall out on Sunday? But it's not, but we have a mission that says the exact opposite. It says, Chelve Shabbos, Kraven Yom Kippurim. The fats of Shabbos, talking about the Tomit Shel Bein Arboim, can be brought on Yom Kippur when Yom Kippur falls on Sunday. Clearly, the mission understands that Yom Kippur can fall on Sunday. V'yomer Abzer, and furthermore, Abzer says, Ke'avinu Be'i Rav, Be'vavel, Ha'vi'amri. When I was in the Yeshiva of Rav and Bavel, they used to say, Hadetanya. That which we learned in the Bryce, the Yom HaKippurim Shechol Yos Erev Shabbos, it says that if Yom Kippur falls out on Erev Shabbos, lo yu token. They would not blow the shofar because they wouldn't have to stop people from doing malacha because you're already not doing malacha. It's already Yom Kippur on Friday. Uvim Motzai Shabbos, and if Yom Kippur falls out on Motzai Shabbos, exactly our discussion over here, lo hayu mavdilin. They wouldn't make havdalas. Rashi over here says, Uvim Motzai Shabbos, v'yim chol Yom HaKippurim, Lios be Motzai Shabbos. If Yom Kippur falls out on Motzai Shabbos, lo yu mavdilin, you wouldn't make Havdalah on a cup, and you wouldn't say Ben Kodesh Lakodesh, Kederach Shem Havdalah Mishabbos Liyantiv, like you normally make Havdalah from Shabbos going to Yantiv. That's because over there, you're going from a strict day of Shabbos to a more lenient day of Yantiv. Here, Yom Kippur is just as strict as Shabbos. Lenient Kalis from Malacha as regards to everything. They have Amrinon, so he said, going on that price, so we used to say, Divrei Akoli. That goes whether you're going to Rabbi Yishmael, whether you're going according to Rabbi Akiva, they have a machlokis about whether you bring the fats of Shabbos on Yom Kippur. So we used to say on that price, as the Gemara is about to say, we used to say on that price that that goes according to everyone. We used to say on that price that goes according to all opinions. That Yom Kippur falls out of there of Shabbos, lo yitokin, and Matzai Shabbos, lo yamavdil, and that's according to everyone. However, Kislekis lahasam, this is Rabbi Zera talking, 
But when I when I went up to over there, Ashkach the Rav Yehuda Brader of Shimon Ben Pazi, I found Rav Yehuda the son of Rav Shimon Ben Pazi. The Yosef the Kamer he was sitting and was saying no, Rav Yekiva. It's only the opinion of Rav Yekiva. As Rashi over here says, Kislek is lost from Ashkach the Rav Yehuda Brader of Shimon Ben Pazi. The Yosef the Kamer Rav Yekiva he v'hasim mefarish lemilse. Over there they explain why it's only according to Rav Yekiva. Miu shamino navi, but nevertheless, what do you see? You see me brisa the chol yom kippur and matzai shabbos. You see the yom kippur can fall out on matzai shabbos. And Rabbi Zera, of course, is talking about over there. He means to say that when he went to Eretz Yisrael, when he went from Bavel to Eretz Yisrael, they understood that that brisa is not following all opinions; it's only following the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. In any case, the Gemara answers lokash. It's not difficult. Ha In one case, we're talking about according to the rabbanon, and in one case, we're talking about the acherim. As the Gemara is about this to say. The Acherim hold, we would not push off, we would not add a day to Elul in order to push things off so that Yom Kippur will not fall out on Sunday. They won't mess around with the calendar. The Tanya, as we learned in a Braisa, Acherim, Omer, the Acherim say, Ein bein atzeres la atzeres. There's no difference between one atzeres to the next atzeres. Ve'in bein Rosh Hashanah la Rosh Hashanah. And there's no difference from one Rosh Hashanah to the other. El arbo yom and bilvad. It's always pushed off by four days. In other words, we don't change the calendar in any fashion other than that. It's always going to move four days, one year to the next. And if it happens to be a leap year, Chamisha, then it's going to be five days. The point is that the Acherim are not going to add to the calendar in order to avoid Yom Kippur being on a Sunday. Rashi over here says, Our Mishnah follows the Rabbanon. They argue on the Acherim. They hold that we can make a leap month for whatever need we need. Therefore, according to them, Rosh Hashanah is never going to fall out on Erev Shabbos. The Dachin, we're always going to push it off. The Acherim, they hold that you don't push things off. They say you don't make a leap month just because you want the calendar to fall out a certain way. It's always going to be a four-day separation, meaning if this year falls out on Sunday, the next year it's going to be on Thursday. That's the, uh, that's the four days. There's always going to be a four-day separation. And that's going to apply, as the Bryce has said, between one Shavuos and the next, one Rosh Hashanah and the next. It's going to be four days. And again, if it is a leap year, it's going to be five days. And the Gemara continues, Mesway, we have the following question. Rosh Chodesh Shechol Yos Let's say you have a situation where Rosh Chodesh falls out on Shabbos. Shir Shel Rosh Chodesh Docha Shir Shel Shabbos. The song that is sung on Rosh Chodesh, that's going to push off the song that we say on Shabbos, the song that's going to be sung is going to be the one of Rosh Chodesh. As Rashi over here says, Meisve, this question is, Rabbi Acha, it's a question on Rabbi Acha that we had before, the Yomar Tokar I'll call Musaf and Musaf. Rabbi Acha said that you blow the trumpet blast on every single Musaf, and here it seems very clear, we're only doing it on one. We're doing it on Rosh Chodesh, and we're not doing it on Shabbos. So the Gemara says, V'yisif, it's really true that you, that you blow for every Musaf, Leim the Shabbos, Leim the Rosh Chodesh. You should have the Shir of Rosh Chodesh and the Shir of Shabbos. Why is it that we're saying that the Shir of Rosh Chodesh pushes off the Shir of Shabbos? So the Gemara answers, Amar of Safra of Safra says, My Docha, Docha Lekadim. What does it mean, Docha? Of course you're saying both Shiros. But the difference is that you're going to say the one of Rosh Chodesh first. It's Docha Lekadim. It, it takes precedence. So first you do the Shir of Rosh Chodesh, then you do the Shir of Shabbos. The Gemara says, Vamai, why is that the case? Tadir Visheno Tadir, Tadir Kodim. Isn't the general rule that something that is frequent always goes first? Shabbos is more frequent than Rosh Chodesh, so the Shir of Shabbos should go first. So Amr Rabbi Yochanan and Rabbi Yochanan answers, Leida Shukva Rosh Chodesh Bizmanu. When it comes to Rosh Chodesh, we want to do that shir first to let everybody know that Rosh Chodesh was said in the proper time. As Rashi over here says, Leida Shukva Rosh Chodesh Bizmanu. Hai Chashivus of Dinan Lei. We give it a certain Chashivus, like as a recognition. Sheyakiru de Pshita Lu Lebezin. That people should know that Bezin is certain. Shekitshu Kel Chaso. That they sanctified Rosh Chodesh properly. People shouldn't doubt that it's Rosh Chodesh. Most people haven't seen the new moon. So in order to take the doubt away, we do the shear of Rosh Chodesh first. But the Gemara says, Is this the hecker that we do? There's another hecker that's mentioned for Rosh Chodesh. As the Gemara says, We learned in a Mishnah, this is the Mishnah in Shkolim. The fats of the Tamit Shel Shachar are put from uh, halfway down the ramp and below. The Mizrach on the east side. Vishal Musafin and the the the, the fats of the carbon musaf Nitan Mechatsi Kevishulamatu bin Mayrav. They're put also on the lower half of the ramp on the west side. Vishal Rosh Chodesh and the ones for Rosh Chodesh Nitanin Tachas Karkov Hamizbechulamatu. They're placed a little below the ledge of the Mizbeach, and we'll continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Nunhe Omid Aleph.